It's Stephen here for The Idiot Quilter. And um, I've been doing some experiments that I want to share with you because I think you might find this really handy if you have a embroidery machine or a sewing machine that does both sewing and embroidery, as I do. Now, I have a Janome 15,000 Horizon. Um, it's a pretty good machine. It was an expensive machine, but it has an embroidery unit on it, and I love the machine. But the one thing, after you spend this kind of money on it, that I wish I could do is to actually quilt, a full-size quilt, a queen, a king, a throw, whatever, on my embroidery machine. Now, I have read in the manual that this is possible because it comes with a program called AccuFill, and I'll talk a little bit more about that in detail in a few minutes. But the thing that annoys me about Janome, they make excellent machines, but their instructions in their manual and in their recent workbook that I spent a lot of money for are, quite frankly, bad. They don't give you any real instructions that are going to help you do what you need to do. So, I got thinking about this and how much I wanted to actually be able to quilt my quilts on my sewing machine. Now, yes, you can do walking foot quilting, you can do ruler foot quilting, and you can do free motion quilting, and I have played with all of those. I am not a very good free motion quilter. That is something that takes a lot of practice and a lot of dedication to that practice. And to be really honest, I don't really enjoy that part about making a quilt, the actual free motion quilting. I know there's lots of people out there that do, and that's great, but I'm not one of them. So if I can get my sewing machine to do the quilting for me, I'm all for that. I'm all about machines, really. So I started to tinker around with this program, AccuFill. But before I did that, um, I collect embroidery designs. I'm kind of obsessed with the embroidery on my machine. So I went to some of my usual sites and I have purchased actual quilting uh, designs that you can do in the hoop. Now what I mean by in the hoop is just that. Basically you put your uh, fabric into your hoop just as if you were going to do a standard piece of embroidery and it will quilt it but it seems to be limited to the size of your hoop. And even though I have quite a few hoops with this machine and I have some really big hoops, they even have a hoop that they claim is designed for quilting in the hoop, um, I just was never able to figure it out or have a lot of success with that. Now, I do take my quilts, my large quilts, to a long armor. I don't have the long armor do them. I do them myself using a pantograph, which is basically a large sheet of paper that fits on the machine, on the long arm machine, and there's a laser light and some handles and you just trace around the laser light and that will quilt your quilt. And that's fine, it works really well. But the problem I have with going to the long armor is one, there is a cost involved. Uh, my local long armor charges about $30, $30 an hour to rent the machine. And to do a queen size quilt using a pantograph, it usually takes me two and a half to three hours. So right off the bat, I'm spending about $100 just in the quilting process, not counting uh, backing fabric, batting thread, all that kind of stuff um, for a quilt. Now that doesn't really bother me that much because really when you make a quilt, uh, especially a large quilt, it's already an investment in both time and in money. But that's the, the second reason why I don't necessarily like going to the long arm place because I have to book the time. And so I have to be there, I have to do it, and I have to get it done while I'm there. It's not like I can stop, go off, do something else, have a coffee, come back and pick up on that because again, it's costing me by the hour and it's just using up my time that I could be using for something else, I guess. So if I could do a quilt on my sewing machine, then I could do it at my own leisure. It's not costing me a lot of extra money. And there it is. I don't have to book time. I can make my schedule work around, or the quilting time actually work around my schedule. So 
I did some experiments. And that's what I'm going to share with you on this video. Now, I'm going to warn you right on the onset that this is going to be a fairly lengthy video. And I'm going to take you through my process, which ended up with the quilt that I have hanging up behind me. It's a, it's a not a bad size lap. It's about 50 inches by 50 inches in size size but we'll talk about that a little bit more later so what I'm going to do is I'm going to move my camera down so you can see uh, and hear about my experiments that led up to this so I'm just going to move you down and I'm going to take off this because it's going to get very annoying I think having my scissors swinging in the wind so here is a practice sandwich so I started off by seeing what could I do just figure it out on my own using my quilting hoop uh, on my embroidery machine. And so I played around with a couple of designs. Now these two designs are designs that I had purchased from an online um, embroidery site. And what I simp did really was I just put them in my hoop and the hoop that I was using for my particular, particular machine is designed for hooping a quilt it only has one hoop. Usually hoops are in two parts. There's an upper and a lower piece and you squeeze between those two pieces your fabric. Of course a quilt is three layers of fabric. Well, top fabric, backing fabric, and your batting. And that makes it fairly thick and most hoops can't handle that. But Janome, for this particular machine, the 15,000 Horizon, designed a hoop that has uh, metal strips all, all the way around and you have magnetic clamps and you just lay your sandwich down on top of that and clamp it and that seems to work pretty good for holding it. You don't need to use any stabilizer when you're doing this kind of thing because unlike an embroidery design your stitches are much more open, uh, there's less of them and so it's not going to pull on your fabric quite the same way and pucker it up and the stabilizer helps stabilize just as it says all of that. So you can see on here I did two designs. So I pulled this design up on my uh, embroidery machine and I actually did it in four sections. Now what I tried to do was when I rehooped each section I tried to line it up as best I could basically by eye um, so it would look like it's continuous because right here this is one section, this is one section, this is one section, this is one section. So in other words, I had to do four separate hoopings. And you can see I really had mixed results with this. You can see here it's not really lined up at the top. And if you look down here, I actually got it too close and I started to overlap, which is not a good look. So it's really a hit and miss kind of thing. But I felt that it might get easier um, if I used a design where I could really have very clear points for lining it up and that's what I was trying here. Again, this is one design right here, this is another, etc. So there are six hoopings here and they do look like they're continuous to a point but again I didn't get it quite lined up here so you can see a little bit of a gap. Just pull this down and you can see here I'm off a little bit and here it's too wide. And I don't think it'll, my camera will pick it up, but I did try to do some marking with a friction pen. I don't like marking on my quilts with anything because you never know whether they're going to come out or not. Um, I'll say a little bit more about marking further on in the video. So this is what I tried. I had a little bit more success and my theory was that with a little bit more practice, I probably could do an entire quilt using this method but not the most efficient. So I went, um, just let me pull this one up. So I thought, well, let's get serious about this and try again. So I had this more elaborate design right here. And I thought, well, you know, maybe I shouldn't try making it look like it's continuous. Why not go with each one being a separate section? and just make the spacing between each section a little bit more even. And that's what I've done here. And you can see the number of times I had to move the hoop or re-hoop the quilt. Now this worked out not too bad because when you 
take a look at it. And mind you, my sandwiches are on white. And normally on a quilt, it would be different colors. So your uh, stitching is not going to show up quite as bold as it does here. And I did use a navy blue on this. So yeah, it stands out quite a bit. Um, it was taking a lot of time for this because this is a little bit more of an elaborate design. So there's one thing I want to say about using this method. It is not fast. However, with a little bit of practice and as you get going with it, it does get a little bit faster. Is it as fast as a long arm? No, it is not. But again, you it's not that much slower than using a long arm and you are sort of um, what you are giving up for speed, you're, you're uh, gaining convenience of being able to do it right from your machine at home without having to go off to a long armor. Okay, so you can see this isn't bad. This isn't bad, but it's still not perfect. It, it's quite obvious that this is not done on a long arm because none of these connect to each other. And I mean, there may be a place for a look like this. I don't know. So I did some research on YouTube and I was looking for instructions as how to do edge to edge quilting using your home domestic sewing machine. I did find some videos and most of them sucked. What most of those videos were showing was somebody doing a little teeny sandwich kind of like this and doing various methods of marking the quilt up with friction pens or with chalk or whatever, drawing all this grid onto um, the sandwich and trying to line everything up with that grid and it just looked tedious absolutely tedious and again i wanted to see somebody doing a large quilt i don't want to see little tiny sandwiches because basically anybody can do this on a little sandwich and that wasn't my purpose for seeking these things i wanted to be able to do a full-size quilt i did find however a program and this was the program it's called edge just hold it up a little bit for you edge to edge quilting on your embroidery machine it is by a company called amelia scott designs and uh, this lady is not amelia scott i'm not sure what her name is maybe it tells me inside because she had created a system uh, for doing this and do i find her name And I can't think of what her name is off the top of my head, but this is, this is a good system. It does work. And I'm going to explain the system in a moment, but you buy this book. It takes you through step by step, how to hoop and how to make the designs look continuous. And it comes with, as it shows on the back, 10 designs as well. And this particular program, it's not that bad for expense. It cost me about $62. All of these designs come on a CD-ROM, which you can transfer over to your embroidery machine. Usually do, do so by using a, a thumb drive. Um, it cost me about $62 Canadian. Kind of expensive. Actually, it was $20 more than what the average person would pay for it because I was in a hurry. I wanted this fast. So I got it from Amazon and I paid an extra 20 bucks to get it within about two days in shipping. Also, it comes from the state. So I had to get it from amazon.com as opposed to .ca. So I paid in American dollars. So with the exchange rate, duties, taxes, the extra charge for faster delivery, it ended up costing me $62 Canadian. So it's expensive, but I looked at it as an investment. And I wasn't disappointed. Her method does work. Now, this is a method that will work on any embroidery machine. So I'll show you what essentially it is. So what you have here is a template. And what you do first of all in this system, get it down here so you can see it, is you stitch this out on a piece of white fabric. Now you want to do it on a light colored fabric because you'll need to be able to see through it and I just picked a, more, a very basic stippling design and there's a beginning point and an end point and those are important now when you stitch this out in your hoop 
you draw a line around it inside the hoop and then you cut that out and this gives you your template and you're going to notice that I have two templates and at first glance they look like they're exactly the same and they are basically exactly the same except this one is flipped 180 degrees because what happens is and I'll show you on my sample here when you set up your hoop, and this is exactly the same size as your hoop because you traced it out and cut it out, you lay, get your quilt laid down into your hoop, and you lay this on top, and it fits in the hoop, and you pin it down, and you have these lines drawn here, which are the center, the, the vertical center and the horizontal center. You line that up with the markings in your hoop for the center lines, and away you go. You remove this, of course, uh, from your template once you get it hooped. Now, there's some very elaborate way to hoop this. Uh, you put double-sided tape on the back of your upper hoop, and you place this on your quilt. Let's say this quilt was blank. This was a blank sandwich, and you place this where you're going to start. And I think she recommended you start at the top middle and you lay the hoop down on top of this and then you take the bottom hoop and you slide it under your quilt and the double-sided tape on the hoop holds the hoop on here until you wiggle everything around drop it into your hoop secure it take the template off and stitch away then when it's time when that's done to move over to the next section you will take your template and you'll do the same procedure again, but this time you're going to, before you put the hoop on, you're going to line up the starting point on the template with the end point, which is right here on this one. And so you have to put it down and you lift it up and you match up the backside with the beginning of this. You do some fine tune adjustment on the position of your needle on your machine. And that's, you know, each machine does it slightly different. Um, snap take this out stitch the next part it works it does work you're able to line up you see here I didn't get this part lined up perfectly but it does work but it's a lot of work and it's a lot of time and she in the book does not recommend that you do this on anything larger than a twin size quilt. She says it can be done in a queen and larger, but the problem is the weight of your quilt on your machine. And I'm going to come back to that in a moment. So I tried that. Then I remembered that I have something on my Genomi 15,000, a program that you put in your computer called AccuFill. And essentially what AccuFill does is it creates a template for your design that you tape into your hoop um, and onto the grid plate of your hoop. Let me grab it and show you what I mean. This is my hoop. Let me move this out of the way. So here's my hoop. And I don't know if it's showing up here very well. Sorry about the glare. But you can see I printed it out. That's just on a piece of copy paper. You cut it out. You position it in the center of the grid and it has marks on it when you print it out that show you how to do it so it lines up with these vertical and or these hor vertical and horizontal lines and you do see see this on the back this is my double-sided tape but actually you don't need that double-sided tape i figured out as i was going along but i was sort of using you know a combination of the accufil way and the edge to edge way and then this goes into your hoop and you line it all up now you're going to see me do this in a few minutes here in, in the video, so just bear with me. Um, at first, I found this very cumbersome. I started to mark my quilt, but as time went on, I got faster. It was easier to hoop it. I discovered I did not. Once I had the initial uh, hooping done, all the other hoopings, uh, I didn't need to remove the hoop from my machine. Whereas with this system, uh, and I'm pointing to something you can't see. With the edge-to-edge -edge system, you essentially have to remove your hoop every time, which eats into your quilting time. So I like the AccuFill system better. However, 
This is for those of you that have an AccuFill system on your Genomi machine because basically it's specialized for Genomi machines. So that's not going to help you if you have a different type of machine. So you would probably want to use the edge to edge system. And I didn't try the edge to edge system for very long. So I am sure once you've done a few hoopings with that, you probably come down with a procedure that's much faster and you can probably move along at a fairly good pace with it as well. Um, so this is what I ended up using. Now, I did try a couple of things just before I move into actually using the AccuFill. This piece was uh, just a, an orphan block uh, that I had made some time ago. And I decided to just try, you know, something like it's it's all sandwiched. You could do a quilt as you go kind of a thing, you know. Um, I haven't really tried this method where you make your blocks, they're already layered, and then you create like a hinge system that you sew together to create your quilt. So essentially, you're dealing with just a small block for the quilting in each one's case. And that could work too. But really, not the procedure I wanted to go with. I did quilt an entire table runner or banner. This was a row by row kind of project. It has applique, the bears and the moon as an applique, but you can see my quilting on that. Now, this was not done using the AccuFill system, nor the edge to edge, because I thought I'd just try what I was showing at the very beginning, just eyeballing it. And I, it, it kind of worked, I kind of didn't, because you can see um, up here, for example, I kind of didn't get my spacing right. I've got a white space here. And yeah, it's not perfect. It doesn't look bad on something like this, but not what I was going for. So what I'm going to show you now is my actual procedure, step by step, that the quilt, let me push the camera back up, this quilt behind me, just move over to the side. This quilt was totally done in the hoop on my machine. It's not a huge quilt, but it's bigger than a sandwich. And as I mentioned, I can't find anybody who's done anything bigger than just a simple sandwich uh, when they're doing this. And it worked, and it worked really well. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna show you the procedure for doing this. And then after you've seen that, I'm gonna come back and I'm going to talk to you about what I learned, the pros and the cons, of this process and things you need to be aware of when you're doing this. So let's go and quilt. Okay, I finished experimenting on all my little pieces and on the table runner with the uh, quilting in the hoop. So I'm now going to try it on a bigger piece. So I put together this small throw size quilt and I have it backed and you'll notice that my batting and the backing as well, I'll just flip this over so you can see. There's the bat too, it has this extra wide strips around it. And that's because you've got to have about a hoop's width of fabric overhanging the edge of your quilt so that you have something to clamp onto. So I've done that and I've basted the layers together and so now what I have to do is print out the template to set up the hoop and get everything straight. So I will show you that in a second. So I went to my computer and I loaded up Horizon Link with the AccuFill program in it. And I printed out this very simple stippling design. And it asked me for the dimensions of my quilt top. And I put those in and it's scaled this accordingly. And so you can see here, it's underneath my grid, but that's what I'm doing. Just a simple stippling. I'm not getting into anything too fancy with this first try at this. Um, so I've taped that to the center of my grid hoop and this pops out. It does pop out, but I'm not going to pop it out for a moment. And you'll notice over here on the sides, I used some tape. This is on the underside. And this is a trick I learned from another video on YouTube. And I'm just using this two sided um, water soluble uh, tape meant for uh, embroidery and that's just a double-sided tape that won't leave a residue on my quilt and allows me to line this first piece up stick it down and then slide my hoop underneath it and put it in place otherwise 
this template would be sliding all around and it would be difficult to get it accurately in the hoop. The hoop is a magnetic hoop. It's uh, for, I'm using the Janome 15,000 Horizon. So I'm using the, uh, S, the SQ, I think that's what it's called, um, ASQ22 hoop. It's marked right there. And this one has, does not have another hoop that you put inside it. It has these magnetic bars that clip to the quilt. I'm not using any stabilizer because there's three layers of fabric. Well, the backing, the top, and in between the batting. So you don't need any kind of stabilizer for this. And I've lined up the center dot with the center of the pattern. And there are lines, you can't see them, but there are lines on the printed out stippling pattern that allow me to line that all up straight. So I found the center of my quilt, and that's why I put a little pencil mark up here. And I've lined it up with the center of the hoop. And that's where I'm going to put my first stippling. Now, this is going to take many hoopings to do this. And if you look here, it also prints you out this grid sheet that shows you the size of your quilt. And each one of these quadrant squares, the four little squares, represent one hoop width. And at the top, it tells you you're going to need number of patterns across the width wise I'm going to need seven of these so one two three four five six seven and I'm going to need for the height eight down and that's basically the map I'm going to follow and as I get each one of these done I'll just put an X through the square meaning that that part is done so that since I probably won't get this all done in one sitting I can come back and see where I laid uh, where I left off now the tricky part of all of this is going to be whether and how accurately I can get the next hoops. I'm going to start at the top of the quilt and I've left about a half an inch um, from the top of the design to the top of the quilt. And I did draw a chalk line all the way down my quilt. The rest of it's on the floor, you can't see it, but you can see the chalk line right here. Just as a guide for when I move the hoop down. Now the next thing I'm going to have to do is put it into the embroidery machine and I have it set up over here. And I'm using a very light gray embroidery thread, a Floriani embroidery thread, as my quilting thread. Um, I did put in a sulky uh, variegated thread to start with. I thought that would look very nice with the purples and things, but I was having a lot of trouble with it and the needle that should be used with it. And I need to do some more exploring of that. So I just thought I'd go with what I know, and that's the Floriani. And yes, I have been told you can quilt with Floriani embroidery thread. So that's what I'm going to use. And I picked a very light color. You can see it over there. Let me just zoom in a little bit right there on my spool. So you can see that it's a fairly light off white, sort of a beigey color. And I, my plan is that that'll just blend into the quilt itself. So next thing is to get it mounted onto the embroidery machine. So I have the quilt underneath my needle and I'm not going to pretend that this was easy. There was a lot of finagling here. I've got a whole lot of quilt sitting here, which I've kind of clipped up off my lap. I've put another table off to the side of my sewing machine to take on some of the weight. Um, but it's there, it was awkward. Now the next thing I have to do is I have to line up my needle so that it is going through that little center hold in the template. And by doing, all I have to do is drop my needle down and I see that it's not, it's pressing on the plastic. So I'm just putting it up and I'm going over to my controls right here and I'm going to fine tune it. Not quite yet, a little bit more. There, it's going through the hole. So that's what I want. So now I can remove my hoop. There's two little holes here. So I just pull this up. It's difficult to do this when I've got my uh, hands on the camera, so I'm just gonna stop. So I've pulled out my uh, grid 
and I'm ready to go. Now, I've set up my machine so it'll do a one stitch stop. So what it will do is drop the needle down, come back up and stop, and I'll be able to pull up my bobbin thread so I don't have a big bird's nest on the back of this. So we just hit start. And there it's come up. And you can see on here, oh no, you can't because it disappeared, but it said it was a one stitch stop. And now I'm just going to fish out my bobbin thread. And I'll... Okay, so I've set up my camera so you can see what I'm doing next. I've pulled up my bobbin thread, so I have two threads right here. And I've set my machine at a, not a really fast speed, about midway to the speed, 600, uh, what do they call it, 600 stitches per minute, um, just in case I have a problem. And I think I'm ready to go, making sure that nothing is tucked under my hoop that shouldn't be. And let's see what happens. I'm just going to stop it for a second so I can get these tails out of my way. Okay, and let's carry on. As you can see, it's uh, stitching my stipple pattern. It is subtle because of the color of the thread that I'm using, but that's okay. Um, just in case I don't get things lined up or I make a mistake, it won't be quite as apparent as if I use a really bright colored thread. And according to my machine, this is going to take about four minutes to do this section. Now this process of quilting in your hoop, I should come up with a name for this. Um, I'm using the active fill system, but basically I am quilting in the hoop. Um, and so I'm just going to let it do its little thing and I'll come back. You don't have to watch this all through. I think you get the idea and I'll come back and show you what's going to happen next. Okay. So it has finished its first hooping. One out of 56, not bad. And that took about four minutes to do. Now I need to move the hoop down to the next section. Now, according to the instructions, what you need to do is move the hoop, move the hoop down. Uh, so there is a facility on my machine and I'm just finding it here. Um, not sure if that's it. Nope, that's not it. Uh, let's go out of that. Um, nope, I think I need to go into that. Need to go into that. Nope, that doesn't work that way. So let's get out of that. Oh yeah, it's up here at the top. You have to get familiar with the controls, especially when you haven't used them a lot. So I'm going to move the whole hoop down. And now I'm going to take the clamps off. I'm going to try this. See what happens. Not really sure. Now remember, I have my center line marked here with chalk. So I'm going to pull the whole quilt up. I'm going to grab my template, which is over on the other side of the room. Give me a second here. Okay, I found my template. Or my grid. I'm not sure what you call these. Now I'm just going to shove it into the hoop, making sure my chalk lines are in the center. And as far as alignment's concerned, yeah, I need to come up more because I want my stippling, the base of my stippling, to be just above the top of the next one. So I'm just going to pull this whole thing up a little further. 
you can see the awkwardness of this. And I'm losing pieces off my table. So I have a very cramped space, and I'm working on that. Okay, I'm having a little trouble here keeping my hands on things. All right, let's put these over here for now. Okay. So I'm just trying to, there's my chalk line. You probably can't see it. Of course you can't see it from that angle. But I'm trying to line it up with my needle that's right here as I pull this up. And I'm just sort of eyeballing where the edge of my stippling appears. Grab my grid again. See how that's lining up. Tug on this. Okay, it might be up a little too high. Okay, it's lined up there at the bottom. Pretty much lined up here at the top, except I'm still way too high. Pull that down. I think as I get going on this, at least this will be my theory, that I will get better at lining up the hoop. Okay, pull down a little bit more. And that's not bad. Make sure it's centered on my lines. When I did this the first with some of my experiments, I never actually drew any lines, and yeah, you've got to draw some lines. Okay. I think I'm pretty good at centered. That's pretty much centered. Okay, I'm centered. Now, um, Now I've got to move my needle down to the center here and fine tune that. So, hmm, I'm a little worried here. Oh, okay. <laughs> that worked. Just hit the center thing. Okay. And am I, uh, I think I need to come, yep, that's good right there. Okay, bring my needle up. Oops, no, don't do that yet. That's where I want it, making sure my alignments are there. There. Okay, now we got to put our clamps back on. I've found that when I'm putting the clamps back on, holding down the grid plate firmly keeps the quilt from shifting as you're doing this. Once you get a couple of these on, you're pretty much good. Okay, I'll let you in on a little secret. This is the first time that I've actually done this. Okay, I'm missing a clamp. They've actually done it with it still sitting in the hoop, moving it. I've taken it out before. Okay, I have another clamp, and I don't know where it is. Here somewhere. All right. No sense wait, making you watch me look for a clamp, so I'll be back. Okay, I found my clamp. I've got everything set up. I've got the grid out. Now I can do the bobbin Pull up the bobbin thread. And now I've noticed something. I'm off from my line a little bit. So I think I can just go over. Oops. Because I've got that chalk line. Not that I think being out a little bit is going to matter much, but I don't know, so I'm playing it as safe as I can. And here we go. Making sure everything's there. Go.
I'm just pulling out my threads so I can cut them off. Probably shouldn't do this while the machine is running, but I live dangerously. And so here's my second hooping. And I'm just making sure nothing is dragging. Because if anything drags, then your stitches are going to be uneven. It's going to pull on them. And this is going to take four minutes. So I will be back when that's done. Okay, so my second hooping is done, but I did run into a little problem. Over on this side, you can barely see it, but I had a little bit of a tangle with my thread, but it wasn't a major one. I was able to get it out. But then I had a little problem up near the top, which is hard to show, but I've had a tuck. And I'm not really sure what I'm going to do about that. I'm just going to leave it for now. Maybe I can steam it out. Maybe I can clip a couple of stitches and fix it up that way. We'll see how noticeable it is when I get that done. Um, also, my stippling overlapped a little bit. Not that you can really notice it um, because it's in a lighter section, but it does overlap at the top. So it means I didn't have my placement quite right. And that may have happened when I moved that needle around to match up with my chalk line down here. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to move the hoop down for another hooping right below this one and see if I can get a little bit better alignment. So I finished the first column and now I'm moving over to the second column and basically it's getting easier now for lining it up. The hardest one to line up I think was the very first one because you wanted to get it close to the center of your quilt as you can and you want to mark your line uh, vertically down your quilt so you can line up the grid and that's what I did again for the start of the second column but this was a little easier because I had the guideline of the set of stitching that came before it so all I had to do was just move the template I didn't even take the hoop uh, off the machine I lined up the grid with the quilt off the machine and then I drew a chalk line from the top to the very bottom and you can see my chalk line along here it doesn't look straight but it is straight um, I don't know if you can see it or not uh, let's see I'm having trouble seeing it oh there it is there's my chalk line uh, right there and it runs right up straight along this line in the grid and I've matched the edges to the edges of the template. So this was where the stitching ended on the first block. And now I've just lined that up with that and I'm ready to go. So I didn't have to take the hoop off the machine, which made putting this in a lot easier. And now I can just do what I was doing before. I'm going to move my needle to the center. And I have that center target mark and I'm just going to lower the needle by hand and it's not quite right so I'm just going to move it over a smidge and a little bit more and up still not there and there we go bullseye so now I'll take the plate out and I'll do my second column so now I have half of the quilt quilted and you can see what it looks like. I'll just show you a close up. And you can see that it's pretty much pretty seamless. You can't see where one design stops and the next part of the design begins again. So really it's working out quite well. So now what I've had to do is flip the quilt around 180 degrees and uh, start on my next section of the quilt, which is the second half. And basically I'm using the same procedure as before, and I'm just matching up the template in the grid, which I don't have sitting on here right at the moment, but you know what it looks like. It's this, and I'm just matching the top. Sorry about the glare. I'm just matching the top and the left side with what is happening here in the last column that I did, and I'm just proceeding down, doing it column by column across until I get to the far edge of the quilt and then it is done and I'll show you what that looks like later. Okay so I want to show you how I match up the grid 
uh, when I have to do a re-hooping. So as I said before, I leave it in the hoop. And this just finished doing a section. So what I usually do then at this point, well not usually, this is what I do every time, is I now move the hoop up and I go to my controls here and on my particular machine, the 15,000, I just have to hit this button and it moves the hoop down towards me but the needle's up here. Now I've got to take off my brackets that hold everything in and as I mentioned before these are all magnetic and this is the uh, S ASQ22 hoop which is designed for doing quilting in the hoop and now I just take the quilt and I pull it straight up until I get to where the bottom part of my pattern is. Now it's not perfectly at the bottom it is partial and you'll know with your design you'll be able to approximate it when you pull it up. So I've got it up in about this area right here and I'm just straightening out my quilt around because it is heavy and you don't want the bulk to pull on the quilt. Slip in my template and with this template it's designed so that you can feel where it locks in. It doesn't actually lock in it just sits in. Now if I look down in here, and I hope the camera, I have someone else running my camera right now, you can see the pattern along here, and you can see the pattern along my template. So what I do is I just pull on the quilt lightly, keeping my template pretty much in the hoop. And until I see the bottom of the design up here, and there's a little bit of a gap, maybe an eighth of an inch to a quarter of an inch, depends on your design, between the top of the template and the bottom of the actually, actual stitched in design. Now you go over to the left side and you do the same thing. And you can see this one's a little too close here and I'm not sure how well this is showing up on camera, but all you do is just gently tug it over until it lines up with the grid. Again, you might have an eighth of an inch to a quarter of an inch. Probably an eighth of an inch is better. So it looks like it's continuous. And you see right down here, I'm pretty close. And I check my top and I'm okay there. You are not going to get it exact, but you don't want it to overlap. So once you've got it in position, double checking here, takes a little f uh, uh, fiddling about with it. Then you take your clamps or brackets I'm not sure which they, what they call them and you put them on now you have to remember that when you put these clamps on you are pulling the quilt a little bit so double check your top and your sides when you put the clamps in and this has moved a little bit and I'm just gently tugging on it just to pull it over doesn't take much and then put the rest of your clamps on. Now I like to do it alternating sides and hold down this pretty firmly because that'll keep your quilt from shifting too much. Now it will shift a little bit. You see it pulled there but it's okay. I've got a little bit of wiggle room. And if it pulls it too much or whatever and you don't like that just go in and take your clamps off and readjust accordingly. And we put the bottom ones on. Now you do want to make sure your quilt is taunt because that way you will avoid getting a tuck. And just make sure everything is secured in and double check again. And my alignment is looking good. Now I've got to bring the needle down to the bullseye mark. And so all I do is I hit my bottom button here and all machines are different but they should all have this kind of adjustment. So you see the needles moving down there and then I just by hand lower my needle to see if I'm going through the hole and I am. If I wasn't going through the hole I would use my left and right up and down uh, cursor buttons just to move my needle in slight increments to make sure that it will go through that hole and everything looks good there. So by hand I pull my needle up as far as it'll go and then that's why there's these two little holes in this template. You put your fingers in and just slide it out from that spot. So now we should be ready to go. So I'll get this started. 
and show you. So I have my thread in my hand from my upper spool and now I want to pull up the bobbin thread and you know from previous segments of this video that I have my machine set up to do what's called a one stitch stop which means the needle will go down and come back up and it'll pull up my bobbin thread. So I hit the start button, it goes down, comes up and I know this will be very hard for you to see but it pulled up my bobbin thread and because they're the same color, but I have them both together like this, I just hang on to them and I start the machine and I pull the tails out of the way. And when the needle gets out of my way, I just trim those and away it goes. Okay, so I have finished the quilt. It's all been quilted in the hoop and uh, I just got the binding on it. I'm trying to get the whole thing into the shot but it turned out pretty good. So I'll give you a little close up here of the quilting. And you can see it's just a stippling, a very simple stippling, but you really cannot see where it starts or where it ends. So it looks like it's continuous edge to edge. Um, basically, to me anyways, it looks like it's been done on a long arm. And I'll show you the back of the quilt as well. Just let me pull up a corner here. And so this is the back. And again, I used a very light colored Floriani thread. And yeah, I'm really impressed with this. This worked really well. So I do have a few tips that I'll go over with you in a second. Uh, as to what to be aware of when you're doing this kind of quilting, but it's very doable. And this is a, a throw. It's about 50 by 50 in size, 50 inches by 50 inches. And the next one I'm going to do, and I'll put that up as a video sometime in the future when I get it done, is a full queen size, because I have no fear of trying that. Okay, so now you've seen the whole process and I'm really pleased with the end result. But some things I learned along the way. One, in terms of speed, it actually does get faster the more you do it. Um, the other thing I like about using the AccuFill system is that I don't have to remove the hoop from the machine as you saw uh, what, what I was doing, how I was lining things up. So that's a plus there as well. This whole quilt, and I said before, is about 50 by 50 took me probably about six hours, maybe, maybe less than that. Each little hooping uh, took about four minutes and I was getting the hoop in within about mm, a minute or so, you saw that. So say five to six minutes per hooping and I think I had about a little over 50 hoopings on this. Might have been less than that. Um, so I think it's going to work fine with a queen size. Now here's some of the problems that you might run into. One, I started to mark the quilt at the very beginning but I didn't have to do that. So I, that's a plus actually, that's not a problem, that's a plus. You don't need to mark your quilt. Um, now some people might be more comfortable marking the quilt but as I said earlier I am not comfortable with marking up my quilt because you never know if whatever type of marking system you use whether it's going to really come out of your quilt or not. Um, you should have a lot of bobbins already pre-wound. What I mean by that is make sure before you start doing the quilting process, wind a whole bunch of bobbins. I think I probably went through about six or seven bobbins for this. So on a queen size, you're gonna go through even more. Um, not that it's a disaster if you run out of bobbin thread, when you're in the process of doing this, but it just takes some time to, you know, you have to stop, you're going to have to remove your quilt from your hoop and, you know, wind a bobbin, put it back in. So it just saves you a little time if you do this in advance of it. Make sure you have plenty of your quilting thread, and this goes for any time you're quilting anything in any method. Make sure you have lots of your quilting thread. I actually have two colors of quilting thread in this one behind me. Uh, I ran out of a spool and 
I was using a brand new spool of um, Floriani thread for this, and that's a thousand meters. Uh, I really needed two spools, uh, and I couldn't get any more of that color I had, but I found in my stash another color that was very, very close, and really with what the quilt, uh, the, the colors of the fabric in the quilt, you really can't tell that I've changed colors. Uh, but that's, I think, the next time I would do this, I would make sure I have plenty of the quilting thread on hand, all the same color. So lots of thread, lots of bobbins. Um, what else can I tell you about this method? Uh, make sure that this has to do with the weight of the quilt. Um, if you're doing a large quilt, you're going to have to support it. Now what I did with this quilt, even though it wasn't that big, it was still big enough that it was falling off the end of my table. So I took an extension table, or a folding table, put it next to the edge of my sewing machine. In my particular setup, I have to do that. And I put it to the left of my machine, and that carried the bulk of the fabric. And I have a, my cutting table is in front of my sewing machine. Uh, so I was able to, you know, utilize that space as well. Now when I do a quilt that's bigger, a queen size, I do have a system, and I think I've shown this on past Idiot Quilters, which is basically some bungee cords hanging from the rafters in my sewing room. My sewing room is an unfinished part of our basement, and with some clamps. And I just use those to hold up the edges of the quilt, the ends of the quilt, and that takes the weight off the sewing machine and everything moves through. Now I haven't actually tried that yet using this method for quilting, but I have used that when I've done walking foot quilting or free motion and it works fine, so I see no reason why that shouldn't work equally as well using this particular method. Um, what else can I say about the experience? It took me a while to figure this out. Uh, but that's why I made the video, so it won't take you maybe as long. You do have to experiment. I suggest starting out small, do some experimental sandwiches, move your way up to a little larger quilt, and then go from there. That's my theory. I haven't done a queen size yet, but when I do do the queen size, I'll be sure to make a video and show that to you. So overall, this was, I'm very happy with the experience. I'm very happy with my experiments. I am thrilled that I can actually quilt a quilt using the embroidery part of my sewing machine. I don't have to run off to the long armor. I mean, it doesn't mean I will never go to a long armor again. There's, you know, there are definite advantages to going to a long arm machine. But for now, I'm going to refine my methodology for doing this type of quilting. And I think it's a great solution. I think it's going to work really well. So I hope this, this is a very long video, I know, but I'm hoping that you learned something from it. I hope you found it useful. Uh, don't be afraid to experiment. And yeah, so thanks for joining me on this little journey that I've been on. And I'll see you again in the next uh, Idiot Quilter. Bye for now.